John? Yeah, the sponsor of today's video is AudioQuest. Click the link in the description box below. Bye. Are we, are we rolling, right? Yes, we are. Yeah, you can, you can, you can finger bang us in. <laughs> One of the biggest stories in the streaming world last week was that Kobo's announced that they would now be servicing Scandinavia and Australia and New Zealand. The reason people are excited about Kobo's is because it gives us CD quality streaming across the board. So for a library of 70 million songs, I think it is now, having CD quality is just fantastic because the jump from say 320 to CD quality for me is the most important jump in source quality that you can make. As an added bonus, around 7% of those 70 million songs on Kobo's are available in 24-bit high-res audio. Now I use Kobo's at home, I use it integrated inside Rune, alongside Tidal, I also stream with Spotify, SoundCloud. I also have a wall of vinyl. As you saw from my last video, I love playing records. But, and this may confound some viewers, is that I have another wall that's full of CDs. So what's up with that? So I wanna step through 10 reasons why I still buy CDs and still collect them. Reason number one is I still get the hands-on experience of physical media. Reason number two is that in that physical experience, I still get a booklet with artwork and liner notes. And very often that artwork and liner notes is not available in the extra metadata layer that comes with Rune. Now the vinyl people right now are probably going, well, John, you get all that from vinyl. And you do, but here's the difference. So reason number three is that CDs are far less likely to get damaged in transit. And even if they do, it's usually just the jewel case that gets broken, which is easily replaced. Reason number four for CDs is that they are generally far more affordable than vinyl, especially on the second hand market with things that are you know, long out of print on vinyl. You can get them on CD pretty easily. Although some, some of the uh, more obscure 90s electronica that I like you know, the CD copies are almost gone on Discogs and they're, yeah, they're going for about 30 euros, which is the price of many new vinyl LPs. So reason number five, CDs are easier to store than vinyl. And that really matters, especially when you're moving house. For my CD storage, I use IKEA's Gnedby storage towers. Those are now discontinued. Reason number six, this is a big one for all digital audio enthusiasts, but for me, you know, if we're talking about CDs versus vinyl, I hate that kind of adversarial attitude, but if we're gonna do it, there's no surface noise on CDs. There's just none, they're deadly, deadly quiet. For number seven, we come back to a comparison with streaming. So if I play a song on any streaming service, that streaming service knows that I've played it, they can build up a profile of my listening habits, which I guess feeds into the algorithms and generates playlists for people that like that kind of thing. I'm not so much of a fan of that, but if I play a CD at home, my CD player is not networked, it's not connected to my router. No one knows that I'm listening to <coughs> on CD. Nobody knows that. Only me, it's private. CDs are private. Again, another CD advantage over streaming in many cases. CDs play back gaplessly. Now, a lot of people kind of go, what's gapless playback? Like, why is that important? So it's for when songs or movements in a symphony are designed to blend seamlessly into one another. And you don't want your streamer or your playback system inserting a gap as it makes a transition from one track to the other. But many UPnP implementations still do this. Some media players still do this. This is called gapped playback because as we move from file A to file B as we're going through the album, you get gaps between tracks. And with CDs, we don't get that. It, the, the technical reason why is that on a CD, there's only one track. When you see the, the, the track number advance, 
that's read from the table of contents at the very start of the CD's data layer. So CDs are gapless, we know that vinyl is gapless, even cassettes were gapless. Streaming and also to a lesser extent portable media players are the sort of the first formats, I guess in history, that are not gapless in many cases. Number nine, this one should be obvious to most people, but it's not so often talked about, is that if you buy a CD, the artist gets paid according to their original contract and they earn more money than they would do than if you just stream the same album. And this is especially true if you're buying stuff from Bandcamp, where the artist gets 90% of the CD sale price. That can be quite a lot of money when they sell a lot of CDs. And this is why I'm, I'm kind of still buying CDs because it's sort of in my small way how I can best support the artists that I really like. But of course, you know, I can't have a wall of millions of albums, which is what essentially what streaming services like Cobas offer. They, they basically bring the CD store home, right? Because most of it's CD quality, like 93% of it's CD quality. So imagine having millions of CDs in your house. No, that's just not feasible. So the range is more limited in my CD collection than on streaming. But here comes number 10. And this is a little bit controversial for some people, but generally speaking, in most cases, and I am generalizing here, but this is generalizing my own experience, CDs sound a little bit better. Now that may not be true for you, but it's certainly been true for me over the last few years. I know Srijan at Six Moons has also found that out recently. And I've been crapping on about this so much to Michael Lavornia at Twittering Machines that he has finally decided to investigate CD transports and CD players to find out for himself. So I would urge you to do likewise. I know many of you do find CDs sound more satisfactory than streaming. So some of you will be thinking, well, okay, old man, like, I still want to stream, you know, what the hell have CDs got to do with me? But here's the thing that often gets lost, is that if you buy a CD, you can still rip it to a hard drive and then stream it. You can do both. So they're not necessarily a mutually exclusive choice. All of my CDs that I own are ripped to the hard drive that's connected to my Rune and Plex server. So I can access them from anywhere when I'm not at home or not in the mood to play a CD. Because I'm not always in the mood to play a CD, sometimes I just want to stream things because it's quicker and easier. But sometimes I kind of want the sort of the, the deluxe experience. You know, I go and pull a CD off the shelf and put it in the tray and I push play and I'm sitting there, it's just me and the music and no one else knows about it. Mm. Yeah. Not a lot of tea left. <laughs> 